nice uh, in with the one, so it wasn't just a pure one mix. It was kind of a one A, one B mix, and I think a lot of those guys showed great competition. I think there's a few guys that you know kind of separated themselves, but there's still a lot of competition at just about every position. Is there some clarity uh, with the secondary on who your first guys up are? Well, uh, I don't think so. Like I said, I think I think there's a couple guys that that maybe kind of pulled themselves away and, and solidified their spot and there's still a lot of competition you know at every position we had you know at least three corners rotating with the ones three safeties three nickels three inside backers and I think a couple guys at every position kind of cleared their way but there's still a lot of fight and there's still a lot of camp left. I know Fish thinks a lot of Tommy Hill's potential do you see him starting to pick up on some of that nuances and little things that Aaron are required to? Yeah Tommy uh you know every day every day he flashes you know every day he makes a great play uh, you know, Tommy's just got to be a little bit more consistent. Some of that's being new to the program, new to the system, uh, but a little more consistency with him. But he definitely flashes, and you can definitely see what the what the ceiling is there. What's your defensive line uh, speak highly of Jim Colton and, and his technique, his, his technical ability. What have you seen from him this offseason? Yeah, I mean, Colton Feast is a is a guy that came in here as a kind of a walk on guy that not many people outside the program knew about and he's just worked and worked and worked and he's put himself in a position to play a ton of snaps this year whether he gets to be a starter or whether he's the first guy in the rotation he's done an unbelievable job with technique uh, he's a powerful guy you know he knows what's going on he has good anticipation of the game um, and he can really run for a big guy he's playing on some some special teams for us as well how do you how do you go from guy who is a walk on to a guy that is going to play big snaps like what do you have to do for yourself in that position I think you just got to show up every day and show everybody that you're better than the guys that we picked for scholarships, you know. Um, and that's happened uh, throughout our tenure with, with the, with the, you know, a few different guys. Some of it happens on special teams, some of it on offense or defense. And Colton Feast has just shown that he belongs with the with the starters and or that first rotation. You have an interesting situation with Nash, who hasn't played a lot of snaps in college football. Uh, and Stephon Wynn, who hasn't played a lot of snaps in college football, he was with a different team. Um, how, how are the two of them sort of competing? I think we, we all kind of sense Ty Robinson maybe a little bit above both of them, but how are the two of those guys competing in the same position spot? Yeah, those guys are, are both competing. Um, you know, I think Nash has got a little better grasp of maybe the system. He can play a little faster. Stefan's uh, still picking it up a little bit. Both those guys play with good technique. Both those guys are uh, intelligent football players. That's going to be kind of a good battle to watch here as the next couple weeks of camp unfold and we get into another scrimmage um, just to kind of see once they're you know kind of equals with knowledge and, and grasp of what's going on who's going to jump out and take that spot. What's the biggest thing Nash did in the last uh, six months or so Yeah I think Nash you know you know you guys see the videos he's always had a lot of strength a lot of power Nash's uh, lateral movement his uh, his quickness his change of direction has drastically increased over the last probably since the season stopped till now. So that's what, I, you know, I'm really pleased with what he's done, you know, just his ability to, to move around a little bit better. Before it was just, you know, if you were in one gap or in a two gap mode, he was good. If he's getting on the move and doing those types of things, probably wasn't the right defense for him. Now he's able to operate in all the calls. What do you think of Stephon's athletic and physical profile? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's what you're looking for. You know, he's 6'4", he's 300 and whatever now, Five to fifteen, three hundred five to three fifteen, uh, long arms. That's that's what you're looking for. One of those interior uh, defensive linemen. Once again, he's got good technique. He was he was coached well. He's got good football intelligence. He's just kind of catching up to the language um, that we're speaking. Probably very similar in in structure in technique, just different language for him to catch up to. How do you feel about Oshawn Mathis's progress in camp? And what's that picture look like to you now? Yeah, that uh, Oshan's done a great job. I thought Oshan had a really good scrimmage. Uh, you know, he's different structured defense for him. Uh, he was off the ball a lot last year, it seemed. Um, so he's had to play a little bit more, you know, true defensive end for us, um, which he's he's done a great job responding to Coach Dawson. Um, he's picked up everything. He's really a big time effort guy and he showed up yesterday at the scrimmage so it's gonna it's, it's really nice to have you know guys on the edge you know you already have Caleb and Garrett now you throw Oshan in the mix and then Jamari Butler and Blaze um, Gunnarsson have had tremendous camps as well so that's gonna be really good to have a good rotation on that edge. Yeah you know right now I think that 
he's kind of playing one spot on the defensive end for us. I think because of the, the knowledge of the system, we've been moving Garrett and Caleb just a little bit more uh, around to make some of those packages. And I think Oshon's a really good edge rusher, so we want to give him you know as many opportunities as we can to get him on the edge. I don't know what you can say to Devin Bruce's status, but just in general, what's the trick of a guy Yeah, I think uh, the challenge with that is, you know, we know Devin's a, a good football player. He's, you know, started a lot of football games at Texas Tech. Uh, he's a real bouncy guy. We've known him since he was at Iowa Western. The trick with him is going to be getting him in here, teaching him what we can teach him, and then when he's in the game, if he's in early, we may have to package those calls a little bit to, to get the stuff that he can operate with. But I think it's going to fall on all of us, myself, Coach Dawson, some GAs, to put in an extra time with him as soon as he can get on campuses and eligible to, to be in meetings. What do you think about him? When? Yeah. <laughs> I hope ASAP. Uh, you know, it's all going through stuff way over my head, clearing him with academics and getting him into school and all those kind of things. So. When you were watching O'Shawn at uh, TC, what did you think of his season? You know, I, I know Coach Applewhite is, was there. And, you know, the film is the film. But also, you're talking about a guy that saw him every single day. And knowing that Coach Applewhite thought he was going to be a really good fit for what we do on defense, and we thought that what we do, he would operate really well in the run game, and so far he has. He's been a really good job at five technique, six technique, nine technique, really giving us a good presence on the edge in the run game. Uh, so, so far, I'm really pleased with what he's done there. What's the really thing you guys are on the path from holdovers and transfers into that kind of one team mindset? Where are you guys on that spectrum? Well, I think as college football moves forward, the way it's kind of is right now with the it's a little bit of wild, wild, wild west and free agency. So I think you're going to constantly be getting new pieces in and probably some pieces out uh, just by the nature of the game now. So I think it's it's come together really nicely. I, I thought that the, the guys that we've brought in, whether they be new guys, junior college guys, transfer guys, have done a great job of meshing with the current players and the current players have done a great job accepting them and, and meshing them with the team. So I'm really pleased with where we're at in that facet. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of the assistant coaches have been super helpful on special teams, but you specifically. Why is that important to you as a defensive coordinator to help out with how you need to? I think that, to me, like special teams is a third of the game, right? And, and when we operate on special teams, it's what much easier on the defense, right? When we punt it and pin them deep, when we flip the field, when we can get a good kickoff, down there when we could score points, all those types of things. It all helps the defense. It helps the whole team. Uh, also, I want the defensive players to understand how important it is to be on special teams. So for me to coach a drill, to coach a position, to be in the meetings, to help out, I think that sends another message to our defense that this is important and we need to operate. Also, we're telling the defensive players, hey, there might be a one and there might be two and three and it might be close. But if you're the three and you're on four special teams and you're the two and you're on zero, this guy is now the two because we don't have seats on the bus. Big 10 only allows us to take so many players. So those backups have to be core four special teams guys or they might not make the bus trip. The overall uh, attitude and help with the team, you know, as you guys start week three, and I assume at this point in time, maybe the newness of ball games are more often, maybe in the ticket. Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, coach has got a great schedule. Uh, for camp and guys are getting rest at the appropriate times and we're working really hard at the appropriate times. So I'm really pleased with the way the guys are operating. It, you know, you can't get bored at doing the normal stuff exceptional. You just can't. And I think that these guys have handled that piece of it really well. Uh, knock on wood, we've had some nicks and, and bruises, but we haven't had anything, you know, catastrophic on defense yet. So uh, happy with, with both those health and, and the attitude of the guys. Like enthusiasm still at a pretty good level. I do, I do, and you know, part of that's driven with um, the way the install is set up, where they're continuously getting new stuff, new packages, new calls, so that they don't get bored um, running the same stuff we ran on day one. We're constantly installing so that they've got a good grasp of, of you know things we might want later down the season, but they also get something fresh every day. I know you said you want to see the defense take a step up by maybe trying to get some more interceptions. Yeah, on the, in the scrimmage, you know, I think we had a, a couple shots to get some balls out that we didn't get out. Um, we did get a couple interceptions, so that was that was great to see. Um, and you know, I think the guys are rushing the passer really well right now. So I think that as that all comes together, 
you know, you have to be an opportunistic opportunistic defense, right? You have to run to the football. And the, right now, our guys are really running to the ball. And when those balls get tipped up in the air, whether a receiver bats a ball and it's not quite there, or the, or the DB tips it up, or a linebacker gets a hand on it, we're getting a lot of those right now. And it's lucky, but it's not lucky because they're running to the ball, you know what I mean? And when you run to the ball, good stuff happens. A lot of teams down, a lot of teams left 19 days until the uh, season opener. What else do you need to see for the next um, you know, we, we've got some situational work to still get in. Um, you know, I'd like to continue to work on our low red zone stuff, some of our third down package. Um, we've got to get some end of the game stuff yet. Uh, a few of those situations and a few things need to get installed um, with, with those packages. Um, so I'd like to see those things get in and, and everybody get operating at a, at a high click with that. Also, uh, you know, we've been stressing communication, both pre-snap, post-snap. Uh, you know, the guys are really good right now at talking through the situations while they're on the field, down in distance, where they're at, what the situation is. Maybe if coaches has got the scoreboard operating and those types of things. So I'd like to see that get raised up a little bit. How do you feel about how Nichols shaping up right now? Yeah, I think the all, you know, right now there's three guys that are that are all running with the ones, you know, Isaac, uh, Javen Wright, Chris Kalarvik. And I think those guys are doing a really good job. I think it's going to be really hard to, to see who's going to be the starter. But I think you're going to see all those guys are going to earn, earn uh, the right to be on the field. And I think those guys need to play a huge impact in special teams too because we've got three legitimate guys that can all play there so we can keep those guys fresh and then they can operate on the, on the special teams as well. Yeah, you know, Javen's just, he's a student of the game. You know, he's been in every meeting, even when he's been hurt for the last two years. He asked good questions. Uh, so I knew that he would be able to function when he got out there. It was just a matter of can he physically do it, and so far he's been able to.